we go. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the Typical Skeptic Podcast. I have a referral that was brought to me by my good friend, Christy Campbell. Uh, she recommended this man. She said he's an amazing healer. Uh, and who I have with me is Dr. Amir Jahangiri. Uh, he's a lecturer in computer science with a PhD in brain computer interfaces and a postdoc in artificial intelligence from the University of Essex, United Kingdom. His research includes design of a novel linguistic BCI that recognizes imagined words in human brain for operating and controlling a computer. He has also worked on developing new approaches in predictive modeling using inverse reinforcement learning by focusing on the structure of life, the reward function, also known as the AI brain. He has also dedicated 30 years of his life to the spiritual mastery and becoming a master holistic health practitioner. Amir's mission is to find gifted people and help them pursue their spiritual mission on planet Earth. He's the creator of his own modality, Dragon Reiki. The treatments offered include a unique personal combination of the following modalities, Dragging Reiki, Reiki Drum, Kuji Curry, Ki Qigong, Shamanism, Pranayama, Mental and Emotional Reprogramming, Crystal Healing, Light Language Activation, Spirit Contract Revocation, Spiritual Counseling and Guidance, Cord Cutting, Soul Shard Retrieval, Past Life Regression, Entity and Implant Removal, Ancestral and Family Karmic Clearing, Total Energy and Chakra Balancing, Psychic Defense and Aura Repair. Amir also, Amir also reads the Akashic Records and discovers Starseed Origins. He can also assist with DNA activations and upgrading the light body. Wow, that's amazing. Oh, I'd like to give him a big warm welcome to the show. Amir, thank you for coming on for the first time. How, how are you? Uh, I'm really doing well. Um, ladies and gentlemen, my warmest greetings to you. Uh, it's an absolute honor and privilege to be here. Uh, Robert, thank you for the kind invitation. Uh, I hope we'll have a brilliant discussion together. Yeah. And what, what I wanted to say was before we get into all the healing stuff, when I when I was reading your bio, I, I noticed that you spent a lot of time with computer science and artificial intelligence what do you think, how does that, how has that framed your, your, your mind as far as like what you think this reality is? Like, cause sometimes, you know, I've read Michael Talbot's the holographic universe and, you know, a lot of people are talking about simulation theory nowadays and like, are we living in a holographic reality? Um, so I'd love to get your opinion from someone who spent so much time in computers. Like, do, do you see, like, do you see a holographic pattern of this reality? And I'll just follow up with this. One time I did DMT. And when I did DMT, I saw like geometric patterns. So it made me think that maybe we're in some kind of like biological simulation. So it's like part biological, part computerized or, or not even computerized, but like just holographic in some way. But uh, yeah, to start off, I'd love to get your opinion on that because of your mastery in computer systems. And uh, yeah. Well, um, um, thank you so much uh, for opening up with this amazing topic. Um, you see, there are, there are laws that govern the universe. Uh, they're best reflected in the hermetic laws, uh, although some of them have been um, erased from history, but they're still the most complete model that we have. Um, and so no matter at what scale you observe creation, uh, whether it's physical reality or other dimensions of uh, manifestation, these rules never cease to exist. So uh, observation of the physical world, the modern scientific method, uh, gives you a correct foundation in comprehension, uh, especially understanding mathematics. Uh, so you see physics and computer science, these are all essentially applied mathematics. Uh, the theory comes along and they know something applies. They don't have applications for it yet. It's proof, it's provable. And then a few decades pass and some novel application emerges and then they find out, oh yes, by the way, uh, such and such person who brought forth this theory, uh, this is what we can do with it. This is what we can use it for. And I've seen this very frequently. Uh, people with uh, logical uh, scientific, but especially mathematical minds, uh, find it easier to understand spiritual concepts. And so the reasoning behind it is you have a firm grasp of a, a reasonable uh, proportion of the laws of the universe. And so these apply in every dimension, every domain. 
so in my observation, uh, some of the most spiritual um, people are also gifted in mathematics and, and the scientific uh, approach to uh, observing reality. You asked about the holographic nature of our existence. Well, that is, uh, an, um, in my humble opinion, uh, quite accurate. Uh, so what we have going on uh, on Earth is a multi-hundred million year long experiment, uh, the purpose of which is designing uh, a vessel, a life form that is resilient. And so many people may uh, think, well, where does life spawn from? It, it, such complexity cannot emerge out of nothingness. And that would be correct thinking. Uh, it takes um, a very dedicated, consistent and intentional approach to create life forms. And so that is what has uh, been happening on Earth um, through a range of species tasked with this, uh, with this immense undertaking. And so um, the nature of the experiment has become progressively more difficult as time has elapsed. And so part of that uh, was the introduction of the uh, the matrix or the holographic reality uh, in the latter parts of the experiment uh, to keep um, humanity under uh, a state of amnesia uh, and um, under a state of, let's say, anesthesia. So we don't flop around during the experiment to make the last stages of the experiment possible, uh, which is the spiritual aspect of the vessel. It's not just enough to have a vessel that can survive in nature, quote unquote, natural creation, because what we're living in, uh, this is a term I have uh, keyed myself, guaranteed unnatural evolution. That is the nature of the experiment. And so it is incredibly tough in every single way possible. Um, the design um, managed to create a perfect vessel that is resilient to uh, anything that the physical domain can throw at it. But then the latter stages became uh, more focused on spiritual warfare and also creating a vessel that could host a very high vibrational and powerful soul like a shard from the prime creator itself. And that's where we are right now. Um, humanity used to live in uh, nature, in harmony with nature, in very small tribes, moving around freely. And then when the uh, conductors of the experiment wanted to capture humans just to take samples, well, humans fought back. And so this couldn't do, because when a human is faced with danger, and when they know for sure they're uh, freedom is um, being threatened. They do everything in their power uh, to maintain freedom. And so they inflicted immense casualties uh, on these beings. So then uh, in the next stages, um, humanity was encouraged to live in small villages, to settle down. Special crops were introduced to the planet, which are not native here, uh, to be able to feed a stationary population. And then cities grew. But imagine from um, the point of view of the conductors of the experiment, if you have the entire herd in one place, it makes things a lot easier. And so uh, part of the uh, intensification of the experiment was the introduction of the matrix, which exists only in the human mind. Um, the greatest way to escape this, even if for a few moments, is to go back into nature, uh, distance yourself from other people, and from all the technology that's bombarding us with radiation uh, in different types. Uh, sit in nature, right? Uh, take off your shoes and socks, maybe put your feet in the, on the grass or even better in a river and relax. And you'll see, oh my God, I snapped out of it. Uh, your whole energy changes. Uh, so uh, the holographic nature of reality is very accurate. Um, there are many, many layers um, existing in this system. Uh, creating overlays uh, that would limit the realization of the multi-dimensional, the infinite nature of us as human beings, the mighty humans, just for the purpose of completing the experiment, uh, which is now uh, reaching its natural conclusion, coming to a close. And so we have a whole um, mass of humanity getting ready for graduation to pop out.
And so um, the bodies that we exist in right now aren't the complete um, design. They're just put together very quickly and clumsily uh, for the purpose of testing certain genetic characteristics or energetic characteristics. Uh, but the um, final outcome of this stage is a design that has never been surpassed anywhere in the whole infinite fractal of existence. So the mighty human with all the codes put into place is something truly magnificent and powerful. So the matrix, the holographic nature is just part of the, pr the prison system, keeping humans in this little confined uh, condition. So certain characteristics can be tested. Again, if a human being realizes whom and what they are, they'll just outcreate it. So they'll start running loose. The whole thing will collapse. That's interesting. That's really interesting. So uh, who would you say, that, I mean, do you have an idea of who these people who are, are the, I, would, I don't know if they're people, but the, 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 the beings who are running the experiments yes. are, would you say it's like the gray aliens or would it be like oh, um, the Anunnaki or something like that or the mantids um, or? Well, okay, last one, yes. Now you see, um, this started uh, not native to our universe, it is a, as far as my understanding goes, it is how life is seeded, life is created for domains of existence where life doesn't exist. Life doesn't just pop out of nowhere. It has to be carefully cultivated uh, with the rules and uh, challenges of each environment being considered carefully. And so this started 23 universes ago. And so the results were so incredibly successful that it never stopped. And so in our universe, it has come to its conclusion. Now they've already uh, set up shop for other universes where life doesn't exist. So this is pretty much part of divine creation. And the beings that started this off, uh, well, the, the, the in, uh, initial being that started this off was a prime creator, a shard of the source of all things. Um, in response to very beautiful, sublime life forms just going extinct, extinct with the slightest variation in their natural habitat, this project was proposed. Okay, we, we have created life that is so beautiful and elegant, uh, they keep dying out, this, this can't be. And so this experiment was proposed to toughen them up through unnatural, guaranteed unnatural evolution. Let's throw this bacteria and infection at them. Let's uh, bombard them with radiation. Let's freeze them. Let's drown them. Oh no, let's mess with their head. Uh, let's put them under psychic attack. Uh, let's put them in a prison system, right? You see what my, where I'm going with this. Yeah. And so the yeah. outcome were life forms or vessels uh, like this body, not, not, not this in particular, but the complete design the human in its complete form, the results were so overwhelmingly profound and outstanding, it never stopped. So it is very much a divine process. You mentioned a number of alien races, and not all of these are part of the original uh, setup. Um, as things were required to become more complicated and tough, uh, a call was sent out to the cosmos calling in all the riffraff, the pirate species, I call them, for them to enter, given their own genetic and energetic blueprints, and come in and mess things up, make it even tougher. So the Anunnaki, a whole range of gray aliens, the reptilians, these are all part of the pirate species that entered fairly recently. I'm talking in the past, let's say, 300,000 years. So uh, they have become part of the mix uh, their own energetic and genetic blueprints have become our energetic and genetic blueprints. And so it then comes to the matter of souls entering these vessels. Every soul can enter and the soul may benefit from the entire experiment if they show um, worthiness, if they show merit. So we all get wiped, we forget whom and what we are. We cannot remember unless we go through rites of passage. And then we are tested with the conditions of this matrix. Uh, can we show forgiveness in, in the face of betrayal? Uh, 
Uh, do we have the strength and willingness to heal ourselves and learn from mistakes? Uh, can we show unconditional love? Uh, do we evolve ourselves even though we are born into poverty? You see, all these things, they give the soul experience. And so the soul ascends. But also the vessel is benefiting from this whole thing. So it's a multi-layered, multi-timelined, multi-dimensional experiment running all at the same time. So the Anunnaki are part of the pirate species. Most of the most of the greys, uh, they're uh, basically um, temporary vessels used by other beings that don't like to take physical form. Uh, it involves all 12 dimensions. And so the ones that are really involved in this, um, the primary ones are the praying mantis. Uh, now these guys, uh, they have perfected their uh, their vessel a long time ago, many universes ago. That's interesting. That's interesting. I, I didn't know that. I mean, I, I knew about the praying mantis, but I didn't know they were such like high creators. Like uh, that's that's really interesting. Wow. Um, yeah, that's uh, that's interesting. So uh, the last question regarding this, because this, so, this is so interesting. Um, are the do the greys work underneath them? Then do do the, all these species work underneath them? Would you say? Pretty much each given a role. Uh, and so a lot of people who have experiences uh, waking up and they think, oh, we're being abducted. Well, there is no uh, sinister motive behind it. This is very, very clinical. And it's the purpose is just basically taking samples, um, data mining, but not just the human species. Uh, the mantis are, and let's call them with their real name, the trontoloids. At least that's what the militaries of the world call them. Uh, yeah. They are tasked with uh, data mining the history of life on Earth. So they've been here from the very beginning. And they're the ones really in control of it, fine-tuning the design. And what they have created, please allow me to be honest, is magnificent. It is a masterpiece of engineering. And so it doesn't extend all the way to source. Um, people like you and I can very easily escape this structure by awakening so anybody who can travel through different timelines uh, and go up and down into different universes with their mind is already out of the matrix matrix uh, such beings are here just to uh, gain even more experience and probably provide assistance to those who are asking for it who are willing for it that's interesting um, so I wanted to get uh, I wanted to I, I wanted to get your your background like I know I know you did computers and stuff like that but what, what when did you have your spiritual awakening like when did you start getting into healing and and what drew you to it and uh, yeah did you ever tell your story before like and if you'd like to I'd love to hear about it like sure, sure you thing. know um, well um, at this point I know that I've been a shaman every single lifetime I've had on Earth. And it seems I'm one of the beings that has been here from the very beginning. Wow. Um, when well, I was born in uh, Iran uh, during the longest uh, conventional war of the 20th century between Iran and Iraq. And so that was a terrible war with millions of casualties growing up in that energy had a profound effect on me. Um, not just the negative side of it, uh, but the uh, the valor shown by soldiers on both sides. That also had a profound effect on me. Uh, the whole idea of sacrifice, which I don't really agree with, but is part of the brainwashing existing in many belief systems, that also had a powerful effect on me. Um, I remember everything from my childhood from very early on, this shouldn't be technically possible, but I do. Um, I was born with this. And so uh, I grew up um, going, in, going to school in Iran and the religion there is Shia Islam. Um, they're very devout, especially after the 1979 revolution where um, um, the Shah was over, overthrown and the system became very the the uh, theocratic 
It's religious. You know what? We you know it's interesting about that. I I follow uh, like the ge- somewhat geopolitics. It seems like that Shaw was put in there by the Americans. Like it, 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 I've heard that. I've heard that the, that the Americans put the Shaw in there for their benefit or something. But like, do you do just as a side conversation, real quick before? But do you feel like that was the case? And like, but do but do you but do you feel like it was better? Was there was it better when the Shaw was there, or is it is it worse now, or? Is or is it two bad signs and bad signs of the same coin? I think better must be defined. I think a people will never live in peace and abundance unless unless they earn that peace and abundance. And so the Iranian people have been struggling uh, to earn this uh, for probably fourteen hundred years. Persia used to be a massive empire. They have a very rich and ancient tradition in politics and spirituality. And then with the emergence of Islam, they were over, overpowered. Uh, they kept their tradition by creating Shia Islam. Most Shia are Iranian or somehow linked to the Iranians. And then came uh, um, the uh, Islamic empires, which were very ruthless. Um, But they managed to integrate within the Islamic empire, contributing massively uh, to the scientific uh, rise of the Islamic world, bringing in their own tradition. Then came the Mongols, Genghis Khan, who probably uh, massacred 60% of the population. That left a very big impact on the culture, the literature. Um, And then came uh, centuries of weakness and darkness with the emergence of colonialism. And so they resisted that uh, to the best of their ability. They never became a colony of any superpower. And then we come into the 19th and 20th century uh, where the US emerges as the new superpower, global superpower, and uh, their uh, conflict with the Soviet Union. Iran has borders with, uh, used to have borders with the former Soviet Union. So, um, making sure that Iran would be a powerful uh, opposition to the progress of the USSR, that was a big um, uh, motivation to uh, meddle in the internal affairs. So, the Shah was brought in um, by um, the US and the UK just to make sure that the Soviet Union does not spread. Uh, but the system that the, the former king, the former Shah had, was very brutal. Um, it was basically a police state. Uh, the CIA um, and, uh, well, the Mossad, they created an intelligence system called the Savak. Uh, the worst of the worst of the worst. So torture, execution, uh, all that stuff. Uh, you can see similar things happening in South America. It's the same system. It was first tested in Iran very successfully. And so then it got to a stage where the people really have uh, had had enough. They revolted. And so what came out of that chaos uh, was the new system, a theoretic, um, the, um, a religious um, system that had ancient roots in, in the people, in the culture. And so they were the only organized um, group of people remaining intact. Everybody else was decimated by the police state. And so now I believe the people in Iran are continuing their struggle to earn their abundance, their freedom, and their place in the world. And I salute any nation and any people that are going through this struggle. You see, freedom isn't gifted to anybody. It has to be earned and protected and maintained. You see many people going through this right now. Uh, So that's my understanding of the the past, let's say, 1400 years of Persian history. That's interesting. Um, yeah, I was always a big fan of like the, uh, the, um, the Greco Persian Wars, you know, and uh, um, because I'm part Greek and I, I have Lebanese heritage. So I've always been interested in all the history of that area. You know, it's, it, it fascinates me. But um, sorry, I didn't mean to go off on a side track. You were, we were talking about your awakening journey. Yes. So, the background, well, it fits nicely into this. So growing up in Iran, um, I was always a grade A student, just scoring 100% in anything I touched. And so 
a lot of the curriculum, probably about 30% of the curriculum is religious studies. I really dove into it. And until a certain age, um, I was a devout Shia Muslim until I entered university, mixed with society in earnest. And I observed, I discovered that, oh my goodness, this is all hypocrisy. It's just a mechanism of control, a mechanism for power and wealth. And that had a very negative effect on me, caused many years of depression. And so I, I started searching for answers. Uh, I began reading all the spiritual and uh, religious texts of the world. <coughs> Excuse me. And so then I came to this bizarre conclusion that if the uh, Abrahamic system claiming to be love and light and all this is false, then probably the opposition, meaning the dark side, the left-hand path, must be right. Maybe these guys are really right. And so I dove into that for a number of years. Um, again, purely for the sake of learning and wisdom. And uh, my saving grace, having successfully come out of it, is that I never caused harm. Uh, I just uh, thrived in the wisdom and the knowledge and the technicality of that polarity of life, that polarity I of existence. I have a question on that. I, I didn't mean to interrupt you. I was going to say... What did you what did you find intriguing about the left hand path? I mean, I know a lot of people who find a lot of benefit from it. I mean, I know people who are able to conjure demons and they they get the demons to do what they want. But there, I believe there's a cost that comes with that. You know, I'm not Christian. I mean, I grew up Christian, but I'm not I don't subscribe to any religion now, <clears throat> you know, or any any. I'm you know, I'm just kind of like I'm just me. You know, but I mean, like, I, 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 I see, I see why some people study the left hand path, but I wonder what you, what you thought of it overall after, after being involved with it. So it seems that the, the experiment that we started off our conversation with guaranteed unnatural evolution extends all the way into the lower dimensions, more denser energies also. The same system of control and domination and uh, forced evolution that exists in uh, the physical reality and all other dimensions above also extends down to the very densest of domains. And so within that realm of existence, I found that the very same motivations that we as humans have apply to these beings a cry for liberation and freedom because they are under the same pressure that we are. You mentioned something about some practitioners conjuring these beings, elementals of that nature, of that density. Uh, a lot of times people enslave them and a lot of times they enslave people. So the same way that slavery is something negative in our reality, the same logic applies to enslavement in all realities. But I observe that if one proceeds uh, with honesty, with valor and good manners, the nature of the interactions immediately change. Because you see, these beings also thrive for healing. They also thrive for evolution. Uh, they also seek the light of uh, the beloved, beloved source of all sources. Many of them are stuck just because of the mechanics of the experiment, but that hasn't stopped them from improving themselves, bettering themselves. And so these beings have the benefit of extremely long lifespans. And I'm talking about lifespans that are geological. They see mountains rise and fall, oceans form and evaporate, and they are still in their youth. And so imagine such a being with intelligence that is far superior to that which we have will make great discoveries about the nature of the laws of the universe because they have unlimited time for all intents of, and purposes. And so um, they will share this when it benefits them. And that is what I found quite frankly delightful the wisdom of the mechanics of the universe, uh, the fundamental laws of creation, the nature of light and dark, how both these polarities 
are absolutely necessary for anything to manifest into solidity, no matter if it's in the 12th dimension or dimensions below our physicality. And that also there is a notion of honor among these beings. They respect loyalty, they respect merit, they respect honesty. And so my approach to all of them it's funny, when, when they emerge, the first thing they ask is, what do you want? And I had a st standard response. I want nothing. I want the same liberation for you that I seek for my own people. And so immediately the nature of everything changed. Because these guys, they can emerge in different forms to practitioners that conjure them. Uh, taking um, a multitude of facades and they choose more soft and more gentle um, representations of themselves when they see that somebody is approaching them with light. And so when I was in that whole realm, uh, now I see that I was some thing that held the light of the divine, causing absolutely no harm. And, and it was in this time period that my, my healing journey really began. Uh, because these beings, uh, these uh, entities and consciousnesses, mm, they enter into skirmishes and wars and they sustain horrific injuries. And so every now and again they would come to me, I'd say, oh my God, what have you done? And put them back together. So a lot of my energetic healing work, uh, the mastery that I have at this point, came from that time, working with elemental beings, understanding uh, how their energy structure works, how to heal them, how to evolve them. And uh, so after a number of years, I received a healing from a very powerful shaman. Um, the gentleman uh, is not alive anymore. And so this was all in the astral realm where he basically evolved me also. And I noticed that Oh my goodness, it seems that uh, left and right, light and dark, they're all one thing. Just the different ranges of a continuous spectrum. And that everybody is essentially serving the same master. Uh, and there is no difference. It's all one continuous spectrum. And so that caused the second um, dark night of the soul for me. And I said, oh my God, the joke's on me. It seems I've gone wrong again. The right, the light wasn't right. The dark and the left, well, they're not right either. And so then I started really, really purifying myself. And that's when I started going within. After probably two years of purification and meditation, I arrived at a point of neutrality. At the sweet spot between light and dark, having gone the extreme distance on both sides, light and dark. Uh, the Sufi and Gnostic tradition in the light and, well, I don't even want to mention the names of the modalities to the extreme left, and landed comfortably in the middle. And this is when I had a revelation. Um, I got um, a download showing myself as a soul, being a shaman among every tribe of man, on every continent uh, and I saw myself in different vessels male female beating on the drums and I was informed that going into the darkness in this fashion is a rite of passage for all powerful shamans because in order to be effective in uh, healing and ascending you have to know what you're working with uh, existing only in the light means you're seeing only with one eye. It doesn't matter if it's the left eye or the right eye. Uh, you're handicapped without both. And at that point, a new modality stepped into my life, as if by quote-unquote magic, which was the Kujikiri. Um, now I know that this is a very, very ancient system. It doesn't even originate in our universe. The beings that planted the seeds of this modality put it here uh, as in um, get out of jail free card for this time period, the latter part of the guaranteed unnatural evolution experiment for those who are ready. And so that really broke me free 
broke all illusions and introduced me to the truth of my infinite nature that I am really uh, a shard from the source of all sources uh, that there are no limitations and so this was probably 10 years ago I still do the practice on a daily basis and that is something I would recommend our esteemed audience to uh, <coughs> pardon me to investigate it is free from ideology and it liberates you and strengthens you from the physical all the way to the divine and this is something I teach also so if somebody doesn't find any resources they can come to me I'll gladly show them and point them in the right direction yeah I was just reading about this as you were talking on your website this sounds fascinating the Kuji Kiri or the nine syllables is a series of Sanskrit chants and hand seals made by the mystics and warriors alike it upgrades all major body centers in the body the lower Dantian the Jade Gate the seven chakras the magical system has no dogma or ideology it is pure and enhances the human being in all domains from the divine to the physical it can be learned in a single session mastery however wow this is amazing i never heard of that before i'm, I'm yes yeah, so I'm, this is this is really interesting well in honor of our esteemed audience let me just give a brief introduction on what it is and what it does so uh, we started our discussion um with um talk about um, the guaranteed unnatural evolution as an experiment um, and the holographic nature of reality with the purpose of creating beings that are resilient uh, beyond uh, resilience that can be acquired in natural divine creation so this is all artificial and so many layers of boundaries or overlays are placed upon the infinite human being the um, unadulterated, non-modified human is multidimensional and continuous, meaning that our aspect as a prime creator has the same voice as the conscious mind, all in harmony. And this is another term that I would like to key. Um, the balance of consciousness harmonics. So consciousness exists in every uh, dimension and domain, and it is a continuous wave. Now, the nature of our um, matrix, or the holographic reality, is computerized, meaning that it must be discrete. You cannot um, simulate a continuous, infinite reality. So you're stuck with the problem of quantif uh, quantification or taking samples of reality in regular intervals and then trying to fit a mathematical formula that will describe the data that you have gathered. And so a manifestation of this is uh, the um, exertion of energetic overlays into the vessel at regular intervals or regular frequencies, i.e. the chakra system. Uh, these are not native to the infinite continuous human being. Uh, they are just like puncture holes in the infinite um, range of frequencies plugging in at uh, certain regular intervals to interfere with the natural um, vital process of the human. So the Kujikiri is a system uh, that focuses on the nine most important energy points within the vessel to liberate uh, the uh, body emotions and mind from these artificial overlays so you would start with the root chakra uh, this is a tedious oh it froze up oh, hold on let me i'm gonna pause it uh i'm gonna pause it until he comes back amir are you there Okay, sorry. 
So um, every full 108 uh, mantras is one mala round. You do 108 full rounds for each energy center. You start with the root, uh, Om Vajra Manataya Swaha. Then you move to the lower Dantian, sacral, solar plexus, heart, throat, jade gate, third eye, and crown, the nine keys. And you focus on each energy center, on the flavor and vibration of energy associated with it. You cleanse it and you dissolve it. Then move to the next, and the next, and the next, and the next. You move out these artificial overlays from your boundaries, from your energy, and become infinite once more. And so the result of this is very, very profound. Um, well, of course, somebody who is uh, a spiritual seeker will find benefits in this, becoming infinite once again. You gain your access back to the ocean of existence, but uh, warriors also found this beneficial, uh, namely the ninja in Japan. They're the latest uh, super soldiers that use this because what it does, well, the ninja, in addition to extreme physical conditioning from early childhood, wanted everything that would give them an advantage in combat. So the extrasensory perception was something they greatly benefited from. Uh, control over their thoughts and emotions and enhanced psychic abilities were something they benefited from. But it seems it also significantly sharpens your reflexes. Uh, so we've got different event-related potentials in the brain. Uh, usually the fastest is uh, P100 or N100, one, uh, 100 milliseconds after the onset of a nervous trigger. Um, uh, but conscious movement takes significantly longer, which is a P300 or N300. It, it seems that the Kujikiri uh, t uh, turns the 300 milliseconds into 100 milliseconds. So their reflexes and movements became lightning fast. They would draw the sword, cut the enemy and put the sword back in before the other guy has time to see. This is a very real thing. And in uh, neuroscience, these are well-known event-related potentials that you can measure in the brain, then associated with the motor cortex. With practice, you become lightning fast. There are other effects of this, uh, especially with the ninth key, the key of Zen, which relates to the crown chakra, where you truly become liberated, or you become a Zen master, uh, where you can uh, affect your vibration um, at will, uh, to such a degree where an opponent, uh, their eyes would see you, the signal goes to the brain, but your vibration is so high that the conscious mind doesn't register. And so you would achieve invisibility. This is also very real. Wow. Another thing would be awareness of the conscious mind of everything around you. So somebody looking at you from a distance, pointing an arrow or a spear at you, you would see them looking at you. And so you would move out of the path of the projectile before it reaches you. And so the ninja used this, and they still do this. It's very powerful, Robert. The beauty of it is you don't have to believe in any deity. It is all focused within. I am the mighty human. The beloved, beloved source of all sources is me. Let's unfold it. Let us, let us uncover it. Let us uh, actualize it. And so every, every center that you clear and um, erase, every overlay, it kicks up a storm in your reality. And once the dust settles, uh, you get up, you shake yourself and you say, oh my God, I needed it. Oh, ho, ho, it was tough, but oh my God, I needed it. And so going through this process is difficult because... It's not just the tough reality that we live in. We are born with layer upon layer of genetic restriction. Uh, there are energetic uh, conditions, karmic conditions that our bloodline is influenced by. Uh, there are effects of past lives. By the way, we're going to have a look at uh, you, my esteemed friend, later on, uh, further down in time. See what you're carrying from the past which affect us lifetime after lifetime unless you manage to deal with it. And so this gets rid of all of that. 
I've been in this spiritual business forever, hundreds, thousands of lifetimes, and I can say this with absolute certainty, it is the most powerful and idiot-proof way of liberation. I was an idiot, it worked for me, so esteemed ladies and gentlemen, it's going to work for you. If you have the discipline and dedication to start and go through the 927 rounds of the mala, going through the energy motions and purifying yourself. You hear a lot of people saying, well, you got to do the work. You got to do the work. Well, here is the best and most valuable part of our discussion where I can impart something humbly and from a place of love to our esteemed audience. What is this work that they say? This is the work. Knowing that you need no guru. You need no book, you need no modality, you need no spell, you need no god, you need no deity. All you need is to go within and release yourself from all these chains and boundaries placed upon you. Exit the experiment and become your true self. And that is what the Kujikiri is. That's fascinating. I, 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 what makes me want to try it? I mean, but can, can, you should. Does, it, does it have to be done... Is it, do you do like, like one chakra each day or something like that? Do you say, do you do like 90, um, would you say, or a hundred? There is, um, for, for my students, I provide a worksheet. You have to do 108 full mala rounds for each of the centers. And you don't have a time frame. It depends on how much time you have. We have lives to live, right? We can't just give things up. Uh, we're still yeah. engaged in our fleshly life and there is a merit and a beauty and an importance to that. That is honest. But if you have dead time during the day, doing a single mala round will take you less than 10 minutes. Yeah. So yeah. every day you've got dead time, hey, use it and then tick the box so you don't lose count. It is an accumulative process and now comes in the hand seals. Now imagine with every round Every mantra you say, Om Vajra Manataya Swaha, right? You go on and you've done this 108 times 108. Now you can use your hands and say the mantra and pull forth all that energy in one go. It's never lost. That's the other beauty of it because you've poured it all into yourself. And so you pull all that energy together with a sequence of hand seals and you say the mantras one by one and you pull that energy that you have accumulated all into one go right and so now i have access to all 10 years of my meditations in one go now imagine that i want to cast a spell or affect a healing and this comes with other lifetimes that you've done this you have access to an immense amount of energy and you're not taking it from anyone or anything it is all you pure wow that's amazing it's amazing. It's beautiful, man. I'm really happy that we had the opportunity to talk about this and, and share this with people because nobody's talking about this. Uh, I yeah. mean, why? Why? And I've, I'm, in the, I'm a lecturer and a teacher. This is what we should be teaching our children in school, for goodness sake. What the human is, how to deal with your energy, your emotions, how to be free, how to live as a sovereign being an empowered being maybe one day yeah yeah i know it's it's uh there, there's a pretty strong control system placed on us you know so it's like it's like uh it's 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 hard to you know think that it'll ever change you never know though you never know one at a time i mean that's my best approach um honestly not all of us are ready yet to be liberated and those who are ready they find their way nothing can stop them and what really gives me hope is that this um, this current is becoming stronger more and more and more people are, are, are coming towards this yeah this is a good sign for humanity gives me immense hope for the future yeah, this is amazing. Um, well, this has been fascinating. Is there anything else you want to cover before we finish up for today? Um, well, I would like to 
just bring a ray of light and hope and beauty in. Uh, esteemed ladies and gentlemen, you are a drop from the mighty ocean of source, uh, but you are the mighty ocean in one drop. Your true nature is infinite. No matter what hardship you are facing, and know that this is, this is by choice, your choice. Nobody has forced you. You have chosen to enhance yourself through the victory of overcoming this difficulty. Keep searching, for this is the nature of the light. If you reach for it, it'll reach back. There is no other way. That's amazing. This is amazing. I'm so glad I I uh, I met you. I I'd love to I, I listen to this is uh, this is amazing stuff. I'm I'm so glad that I'm really like interested in all this. It's so uh yeah wow. It's um I don't even know what to say. I'm like you know uh yeah um so yeah. this is this is what healing is. I, I don't do anything to anyone or for anyone. I just remind them of what they already know. And I think this has happened for many people just listening to this. Uh, there is a vibration and a flavor and an aroma and an essence to truth, which is undeniable. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's amazing. Um, yeah, well, do you want to tell everybody where they can find you and, and how they can how they can find you and, and how they can get Absolutely. your services and stuff? Uh, well, uh, I've got a presence on Facebook. And Instagram, Wizard of Wivenhoe. Uh, my web address is down to the left hand side of uh, my picture, wizardofwivenhoe.co.uk. And uh, my public work is just focused on healing. And my private work is my private work. Uh, it'll blow people's minds. I can't uh, talk about it publicly. Wow. Wow. Well, thank you so much. And uh, I'd love to do this again. And, you know, and, uh, absolutely. Yeah. I would love to. Yeah. And I'll send you a link when I post it. Much appreciated. Thank you. All right. All right. Thank you. Nice meeting you. Take care.